Hey guys, welcome to the uh, first clip of the episode. So, um, starting off at runecrafting from 66, and we have to get around an average of like over 100,000 experience per day if we want to get this video out on time. And uh, good news is, I'm back under 1,000 rank for Ultimate Iron Man, so that's cool. Um, I'm really jealous of, uh, normal Iron Man because, uh, a while back during the, uh, Darkmire quest, it unlocks them a, uh, day alt essence mine, so they mine their own untradeable essence, and the NPC can send it to the bank, and, uh, when they craft that essence, it gives them 1.5 times the normal experience, so they could just literally... AFK mine the day alt essence for like every day on the weekday and then if they're off of work they can go really hard pull like 20 hours of rune crafting on Saturday and Sunday and they can do lava rune crafting and get like 50% more XP so I'm really jealous of them but we just got to stick with this and uh, put our best foot forward um, this is going to take us a while so uh I don't know how long the episode's going to be. I might just get 77 on the next clip and then call it an episode. But yeah, we're just going to sit here. This will be our new home for the week. So see you on the next clip, I hope. So sadly, we did not get Dragon Tear on League's Trailblazer. Um, I'm on the Ultimate Iron Man right now. I've uh, built uh, pretty much what I can build of the uh, League Hall you can build a uh, higher quality uh better looking stands and like a mahogany case mahogany outfit stand and like a marble banner stand but they all cost a lot of money but it's the function is the same so we got up to rune tier on trailblazer league and when i played twisted league i got up to mithril tier i honestly didn't play much on a Twisted League. I think I, pro I didn't even get to the max relic, so I uh, stopped at Mithril. So we're gonna put the Mithril trophy on the. Um, we're gonna put the Mithril trophy on the left, and we're gonna put the more uh, prestigious trophy in the middle. So yeah. Oh yeah. I, I guess. I'll, uh, I guess I'll do the emote. There is an emote. It's not as impressive as the uh, dragon emote. Because the dragon emote breathes fire. But here we go. And we've got a healthy amount of points saved up for when we grind out another set of graceful. And we'll be able to buy the brown trailblazer graceful to, uh, you know, store in the house. But yeah, that's what we're looking like at right now. I decided to put the league hall over here because it doesn't really have a function. It's more of a form than a function, to be honest. Um, I know for every room you make, it increases the load time of the POH, which is, uh, you know, the POH is such a useful place on a UIM. So clogging it up with useless rooms can be seen as a hindrance, but I don't mind. I don't mind at all. All right, so with this, I should be coming up at 71 rune crafting. Um, gained about around. I'm, I'm about to gain like 70k uh, rune crafting XP for the day, which I think is a very healthy amount, in all honesty. But yeah, there's 71 rune crafting, and I got. 70k rune crafting XP. Yeah, I think 70k is doable for like weekdays and maybe weekends. You could get between 150k, just basically double your XP. But yeah, um, 660k XP to go. Um, I'm not gonna update for every level. That's just kind of stupid. But yeah, see you in the next one. Okay, so I'm at the Agility Pyramid, mainly because I'm bored, but um, I do want to take a break from runecrafting. I'm still six levels off the goal of 77, 
but I kind of want to clean out the looting bag, um, get rid of these monkey items by doing Monkey Madness 2, and the best way of doing that, or prepping for that, is to uh, increase my melee stats through Slayer. I've got the Slayer helmet in the stash unit, so I'm just working on getting a small amount of money for the, uh, put the Battlefront teleport in the Portal Nexus so I can um, more easily re-gear for when I need to, um, you know, store my items at his spore, you know, wipe and all that stuff. And uh, the stuff I want to get rid of in the looting bag, like, I don't need the black dehyde top. I can get that from, you know, crafting it. Uh, the dragon square shield, that's a master stash, so I can't do much with that. These are hard stashes. The, um, the headband, I can actually store those. That would just require me to store my stuff in Hispori and um, do a couple death storages once or twice and then put them in the wilderness. Uh, I've also got, I want the leaf bladed battle axe for melee slayer for at least um, Taroth and Karas. It's slightly worse than a dragon scimitar so I can go ahead and buy one of those. And then um, other than that, yeah, I, I gotta get rid of the dragon spears that I got from my last Slayer grind and put them in their elite stashes. But yeah, I'm just gonna focus on cleaning up the looting bag of the of the um you know the stash items that I'm probably not gonna use, especially like the the ones in the wilderness. But I am going to store them because it's just you know something I should do. So that's gonna be fun when I gotta do that. But it's sad because I'm going to have to get rid of the plank sack, but, you know, I can reobtain that. I have the points, too. It's just, yeah. All right, here's the addition of a very useful teleport uh, in the POH Nexus. This is the Battlefront teleport. Uh, basically, the points of interest uh, for this teleport is um, uh, the... Uh, the Slayer Master um, in Karend, she is uh, very good for Iron Man because of her uh, brimstone keys. They're very useful for supplies. And not only that, but um, the Battlefront Teleport is probably the one of the closest and most convenient locations for the uh, for the. Oh, yep. Yeah, so here's where it puts you out. It's one of the most convenient locations for. Um, Slayer. Uh, I guess I'll go check my Slayer task, but um, it's also really close to the farming guild. The fairy ring actually puts you out closer, but currently because because we don't have the Lumbridge Elite Diaries complete, it's really difficult to get back here um, from a death from Hispori storage, so whenever we need to store our things, uh, we won't need to go get a Draman staff back. Before, I used to, like, put my coins in um, Last Man Standing, which used to exist in Alcarid, so that was really close to a respawn point. So I would put my coins in there, be on the the Arceus spellbook, and then I would buy the runes from the Elise shop to teleport to the battlefront. But now that it's in my house, I just need to spend my extra coins to move my house to... Remington instead of Karend because I have I used to have it in Karend or I do have it in Karend because it was really good for um it was really good for uh you know doing mahogany homes because that was like one less one less teleport I had to worry about so let's see what our assignment is going to be gargoyles that's actually a really good task um and actually the leaf bladed battle axe it's a really good money task, and I need money, and the Leaf Bladed Battle Axe that I do have, it might actually be better DPS on them because they are weak to crush. So, um, let me go purchase a Granite Hammer while I'm here. Rock Hammer. Um, do I have any, do I, oh, I do have Gargoyle Smashers. Okay, cool. I, I forgot I had that unlocked, so yeah gargoyles it's a really good really good money task which we're, we we will need because i need to um stock up on some more law runes i need to get barrow's gloves for the um continuation of uh slayer and 
yeah, I also do want to purchase a Dragon Scimitar eventually, but I believe the Leaf Bladed Battle Axe will be more DPS on the Gargoyles as they are weak to crush, but I, I will calculate it and see what the consensus is. But I will use the Battle Axe, of course, because I can't really afford the other option, the um, Scimitar, but yeah, nice. Okay, so with this, uh, I figured since I, you know, stored my stuff at Hisporia, I figured I'd knock out the last, um, the last Entrana related quest I have to do. So I started Monkey Madness 2 up to the point where you have to go to Entrana, and I did all that. So I'm just going to drop these quest items, which I'm sure are useless, I'm pretty sure. And I got my uh, Bronze Axe and my Draman Staff, so now I can, uh make the sled I need to do for the uh, stash unit for some of the items I have at Espor, so I'm going to go do that now. There we go, so I just uh, had to put in the bank pin, but yeah, I've stored both dragon spear stash related stuff in the stash unit, so now I've got two extra spaces free in my looting bag, which I still don't have on me because, I don't know, I was wanting to do some quest related stuff, and I know that kind of interferes with it, but now I can probably get the looting bag back once I finish this task because you know just wanna but yeah then I can stuff things like the gold ore in there actually I could just use that but it's better with a clearer inventory but it, you can also use it um, just drop some stuff like some food and it won't be too bad but yeah I can reclaim the gold gauntlets for free so uh, marble I mean gargoyles are really good smithing XP passively so yeah now I can just drop this stuff and go back to gargoyles so that happened, um, I've been boosting Slayer points by going to Maschina for 9 tasks, and then Konar for the 10th task, and I got a Zombie Champion Scroll. <laughs> this is the first Champion Scroll I've gotten on the account, um, so that'll unlock the music track for me if I ever go for the music cape, which is nice, um, but yeah. <laughs> Uh, let's see, what restrictions does this one have? Hopefully. Um, yeah, I, I can't believe this. I got, I got so unlucky for, like, the, uh, I got so unlucky for, like, the Dragon Fire Shield on Leagues, and then I got this really quickly. Uh, what do I have to do? Uh, can only use melee or ranged attacks. Okay. Alright, nice. I'll go do this one on, uh, see if it even counts as a zombie. We'll see. Okay, so it's been quite a while since I've recorded a clip of Old School, and I haven't really been playing. The last clip I actually recorded was on January 9th, give or take. But today, or yesterday at least, um, an update came out that I was very much, uh, looking forward to the um, the blood bark and swamp bark armors, uh, you make them through the new Shades of Morton revamped activity, but you need 90 wood cutting to chop the redwood tree, um, cause you can only burn the new tier of shades with redwood logs. I have the fire making for it, just not the wood cutting. So I'm trying to get my wood cutting up to 90. And then I'm still six levels off the initial rune crafting level you need for blood bark. And um, blood bark, the stats are actually really good. Like um, they've got like adamant tier defensives, and um, the only really bad part about the armor is the uh, range defense. But that makes sense because it's you know uh, it's a um, it's a magic based armor so it shouldn't have range defense so the stats are really good uh, really balanced um, I can see it being used for hybriding because they give like no negative attack bonuses especially the swamp bark armor because that'll be a little bit cheaper and it also buffs um, binding spells so I see I'll, I will see PKers definitely use that maybe maybe a lot more often than like the traditional Zerikin robes so yeah I need to get six levels and two skills Probably not going to play too much, but yeah, uh, this week I'm kind of focused on uh, RS3's um, Gathering Week. You get 50% more XP in Gathering Skills, which are traditionally slower. Even in RS3, they're 
kind of slow compared to other skills, so I kind of want to get on that because uh, I really don't like fishing, and that's like the only gathering skill I have left. Yep. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention another update that came out that's very useful for the account um, between my hiatus was the uh, Puro Puro rework. Now um, you're able to buy impling jars from the NPC at Puro Puro for like a, a nominal fee, like 2,000 coins, which is nice to help you get started um, doing Puro Puro, because otherwise you'd have to, um, otherwise Ultimate Iron Man to, you know, do Puro Puro, they would have to complete Dream Mentor for the most efficiency, and then switch spell books, because um, that allows you to cast the spell Make Hunter Kit, which gives you a, um, which gives you a uh, impling jar. Otherwise, you'd have to do a bunch of weird things to make the impling jar, like using a sieve, planting flowers, and grinding them up with like anchovies. It was really weird and really inconsistent with the gap and speed and how you created impling jars between account progression. So it's nice that they changed that and you can just buy it for 2000 Not only that, but I think you can store almost every piece of impling hunting equipment. So magic butterfly net, excess impling jars, jar generator, even though that's not too useful because we can just turn in low tier implings for jars and I'd rather have that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's going to be huge because before the best way I think I was getting medium clues was uh, looting the stone chest in the... Lizardmen crypts because they gave like I think a one in a hundred chance of a medium clue and I didn't have to re-gear and do stuff like pyre fiends or guards or stuff like that I can just yeah um, that's gonna be nice if I ever choose to go for ranger boots but oh drop my potato but yeah um in terms of what else I could do to speed things up, I could get a plus five boost and use these mushrooms to put in my house as a fairy ring. That's an option. Um, it would speed things up a little bit, but I don't know. I don't use fairy rings too much unless I'm doing clues, so we'll see. There we go. I uh, finally decided to um, place the fairy ring in my superior garden. It needs 85 construction, so I just boosted with a... Uh, spicy stew plus five boost to uh, build it in the house and um the other ones you can make in here are the spirit tree at level 90 and then the spirit tree plus fairy ring at 95. i know most people um have one superior garden with the ring and the other with the spirit tree until they get to 95 but um i don't know spirit tree teleports they're not super good but i guess if i was doing clue scrolls and i got to like 85 construction I might think about building that but we'll see um just got to continue wood cutting up to 90 and now I have the uh, full lumberjack outfit I got from temple trekking so it should be very very slightly faster okay so uh, I kind of want to do some medium clues so I did some calculations on uh the amount of oak planks we can expect from a ranger boots grind and Assuming we go on drop rate, the drop rate of any specific unique from medium clues that's not elegant, it's like 1 in 1,133 per drop slot, and assuming you get 4 on average, it's 3 to 5 drops per average, but assuming you get 4 on average, let's see, um, Eclectics, they give medium clues at a rate of 1 in 25, so... Um, 284 times 25 is 7,100 uh, implings that we would need to um, catch to get those clue scrolls. And 7,100 eclectic implings and they um, gold bars and oak planks, all the stackable items that are on there. Uh, they also have adamant ores on their uh, noted item drop table, but we won't really keep those. But uh, oak planks, you get four of them, and they're received at a rate of 1 in 10, so 7,100 implings divided by 10, which would be 710 times 4. This medium clue grind will reward us with 2,800 
40 noted oak planks, which is a vital, vital item that we would love to receive lots of for um, for construction training. Normally, um, most high-level Ultimate Ironmans would train construction uh, through mahogany homes using teak planks at Prif. However, um, any time any player in Ultimate Ironman can receive noted items as opposed to gathering the resources themselves, uh, it's highly preferable as that speeds up the XP rate of whatever method they're doing. So we're going to keep the gold bars and the oak planks in addition to the air runes to cut back on the uh, dust rune usage for uh, certain teleport spells, mainly the uh, teleport to Catherby that'll cut back on our dust rune use. So yeah, um, that's a lot of oak planks, 2840. And the gold bars, I'm just probably going to sell them to a shop in mass amounts. I have, I don't think it's worth turning them into uh, amulets, I think, gives the most XP. And turning them into amulets, I just feel like would be a waste of time. It's AFK, but, you know, it's just, I don't see it as a uh, very feasible method of training crafting when probably world hopping at uh charter ships is more xp so yeah i'm just probably gonna turn them into gp uh when i receive ranger boots so yeah hopefully we don't get too dry but um going on rate or going dry will increase the amount of available construction xp we can get from this grind so yeah see when we get a an interesting unique still no ranger boots not like i'm expecting them with only 66 completed but i had some eclectic jars in my inventory while i was uh you know just having an excess while i was uh ready to open them doing another medium clue and i got three wild pies uh in my inventory from doing that the wild pies are a one in a hundred drop rate from eclectic implings so that's pretty crazy getting three of them within like i probably had like 10 eclectic implings so, yeah uh here's the uh medium clue loot so far if you're so curious i did get the um the uh you get a bonus from like entering a crop circle uh from a location that isn't puro puro for like 30 minutes it's one of the new updates so yeah, you just get that bonus, and then you hop to a world that preferably doesn't have bots. And then you uh, you enjoy your 30 minutes of uh, faster crop circle pushing. So yeah, we'll see how this goes. Okay, so I uh, finally finished the Freaky Forester random, the leader hosen outfit. So what I'm missing now is the zombie head, the stale baguette, of course, that's going to be really rare. And I still haven't gotten a beekeeper random on the main game. In leagues, I ended up getting almost all the entire set. I was just missing one item. But, of course, you don't keep that outfit across leagues, so it's useless to mention it. But, yeah, um, that's the loot from my eclectics. Here's the eclectic count in Puro Puro, 931. And uh, this is the loot from the Eclectics. I did get a uh, uh, the Ceridoman Blessing. So the only blessings I'm missing for God Wars Dungeon Protection are the Zamorak one and the, uh, I think the Armadil one uh, is what, another one I'm missing. But yeah, um, see you in the next clip. Okay, something notable, but not really. Um, I ended up getting uh, Green Dehyde Body T. From a medium clue and I got the chaps earlier so that is a reclaimable piece of ranged armor I can get back fairly easily without crafting it so that's kind of cool um not really gonna use it but yeah plus D hide is getting a nerf anyway so yeah all right finally a uh, notable unique item wizard boots um these are plus one magic attack over mystic boots but um 
the blood bark boots also share the same magic attack bonus so they're going to be useless when we get to 77 rune crafting but it is a uh, best in slot item for now all right here's the 100th medium clue casket uh total in this session over the weekend i've done 51 so let's see Ooh, okay so i believe i already have a zamorak miter in the stash unit but that can go in the house and another so it's a double unique blue headband not, not too bad um let's see if we can get lucky and get a, another medium clue from the ones we have in the inventory nope 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 Mm, not lucky. Oh well. But yeah, um, 5.30 oak planks, and this is our eclectic impling catch count. 1,400 so far. Nice. Okay, I think this uh, is a blessing we don't have, so let's, uh, let's go double check that. That would just leave us with one blessing that we need oh i also got um i'll show you when i go to the poh but i also got another piece of the armadillo vestment set and i just need one more part from mediums the uh the crozier right here and then once we get the crozier we just have to do easy clo clues for those two and then we'll be able to get a single piece of armadillo out on command which is nice for like god wars protection and then the vestment set is like nice in and of itself for um for like barraging because it's got like a magic attack bonus and a pretty good prayer bonus but most people just use proselyte still anyway so i probably won't use it for barraging but uh let's see do we have that blessing we don't yeah unholy blessing that is a very nice item to get for God Wars protection. So now we're just missing the honorable blessing, which is the armadillo one. Of course, we can always um we can always go get an armadillo pendant from uh from the uh, Temple of Ikov quest. We already did that, so we can go reclaim that on command. So yeah, we just have one blessing left. Very nice, and we're at 113 medium clues. That's the loot. And here's the impling count. So, uh, other than being a very interesting and strange clue, just entirely runes, um, we finally got our first master clue, and it took us 86 medium clues to get one. It's highly doubtful I'll be able to complete this. And the amount of um, re-gearing I might have to do for, like, wilderness steps is really iffy. And not only that, but Sherlock is the main contender. Uh, but I can do that. It's just a matter of me, um, it's just a matter of me re-gearing and putting away these jars at Puro Puro so I have some form of combat equipment for the um combat encounters but i definitely won't do wilderness i'll do anything outside of wilderness but not wilderness so yeah i'll update you on how many steps we get through so even though we got extremely lucky with our um clue steps we got back to back of the same brassican mage stuff the uh the one located like right here pretty easy um yeah, we got back-to-back -back steps on those, and then we got a completable, um, we got a completable cryptic clue. But Fletcher Rune Dart, um, Sherlock has a lot of master steps, a lot of which I can't do, and a lot of which are very annoying to grind out and get the items to get as they're untradeable, like the, uh, Shade Keys. But this one, while we could train Fletching to be able to Fletch the Rune Dart at 81, it's probably not that expensive with broad arrows, plus we'd get some woodcutting XP on the side. While we could do that, um, you also need to get the rune dart tips, 
which I would need six smithing levels for, or you can also get it as a drop possibly from Warcath or Crystal Implings, but we still don't have access to those methods, so I'm going to go ahead and drop it. Total of three steps completed which took us 86 clues just to get one master clue. That just goes to show you that uh, probably the best way of getting master clues is to turn in uh, clues of the lower tiers, in my opinion. Finally, we obtain not ranger boots per se, but an item that will save us, at this moment at least, two inventory spaces for our clue skull grind. I don't think I'm going to actually hang on to the Master Scroll book because I'm not going to go that hard on clues and by the time I go harder on clues I'm going to unlock more and more teleports, more and more run energy, stamina potions, all that. But for now, it is an invaluable resource to my Ranger Boot grind. I'm at 146 right now and that's the loot. Two Masters that we couldn't do, two Wizard Boots. Let's just keep on keeping on. And there we go. A grind that took, let's see, I started this on Saturday and today is Thursday. So a grind that took five days has now come to an end. We received Ranger Boots on our 175th medium clue. Here is the loot we got from the grind. Uh, we still have not finished a god book, but I'm not going to continue Elite Clues for the 400 for the Clueless scroll because I just feel like it, our time would be better spent. Um, because the more clues we can do while having master clue requirements, which we don't really have, nor are we geared up to do it because our inventory is kind of limited at the moment, I believe clue grinds other than this are better saved when we have the inventory space so yeah i can put these in the house and these give us a whopping plus eight ranged bonus the god dehyde boots have some slight advantages to them they have one less ranged bonus but they also have better defensives and they also offer god protection so they have more utility in that fact the rangers are just extremely good because you can store them, and then when you're ready for like super high level stuff like Inferno, you can attach a uh, Pegasian Crystal to them and further increase the ranged and defense bonuses. So yeah, really nice item to get. Um, and that's a duplicate Holy Blessing, so let's just... I think that high alks for a decent bit. No, it doesn't high alk for anything at all valuable is it really valuable that's 65k uh it's not worth dropping to the main but as for the um purple sweets while we could save them and use them for like replenishing run energy what for rune crafting for Arceus library i feel like it's better to be used uh to drop to the main because it's like what like these items are always in demand they're 7.2k each and they're not really used for their run energy restoration properties they're really just used for tick eating and we really don't need to tick eat i mean it is how much food is that i think they restore like two each so that's 440 hit points worth of healing if we were to use it at somewhere where our space was limited like the you know fragment of sarin but i feel like that's just a waste of money entirely like it's the second most valuable item that we've gotten from uh medium clues so i think i'm just gonna drop trade it over to my main account yeah um i think that's gonna be the end of the video uh i've got a lot of well i don't have a lot of clips but they add up to a lot of time and i still gotta still gotta get 90 wood cutting and 77 rune crafting so yeah i'm gonna just compile these clips together and see how much it adds up to oh another random is it another mime that's like the third mime today and i don't need it maybe i'll do some easy clues for uh bob shirt i know i need that for a clue 